Hey guys, today we're going to be taking another look at the Creality CR5 Pro. But the difference with this one, it is a high temperature version, which gives us the ability to print filaments up to 300C. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at it, set it up and do some prints. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. Alright, so I'm pretty excited to take a closer look at the CR5 Pro High Temp and I went ahead and unboxed it. It was packed very well. The box size was quite big and also very heavy at 87 pounds. And because of the great packaging and all that soft foam, the printer came in perfect shape and Creality does a great job in packing their printers. So the only thing we've done so far is unpacked it, peeled some of the plastic protection on this door, unwrapped the bill plate and got everything out of the printer. And you guys can maybe see up here we have actually a cap that the high temperature version comes with and it's not completely clear it's kind of like a diffused plastic and it does have a cutout for the wiring and PTF tubing to go through the back but we're gonna look at all of that in detail shortly here let's take a quick look of everything that came with the printer so we have the user manual and we got a few things inside so we got a quick unpacking guide which could be Pretty helpful to get the printer out and going. So one thing that's quite important that you don't want to forget is you want to set your voltage to the correct setting and we'll do that here in a second. We also get here the assembly guide for the side doors and those did come in these sheets and we do need to peel the protector off here before we install them and they simply just go into the printer here and they line up on the holes and you got 12 of each hardware to install them and there we have a picture of how they install so yeah not very difficult so you also get an after sales card that has your warranty on there also and here we have the manual itself so yeah it just goes over the basics here everything that's included and how to get started with the printer so yeah this should be pretty simple guys because this printer is pre-built there's not much to assemble except the doors and we do have to put the spool holder on but yeah it pretty much comes pre-built ready to go so we also do get a power cord us type full size sd card with a usb adapter and the card is a gig and i really like that it's a full size so here's something really interesting you actually get a little toolbox and it has a little picture here of these tools which is a little misleading because that's not what you get as it is more typical style of what you get with 3D printers. So we get a spatula, kind of sharpened, but not really. And you probably don't want to use this, especially on the bed that comes with this printer. We get the spool holder with the hardware nuts to install them. And it is all plastic. Here in the back, we have some tools and other things like the zip ties. I do like the snippers that they include. They're very nice. We get a set of Allen wrenches, flathead screwdriver, and some open-ended wrenches. A clean-out needle, and this is to unclog the nozzle if you, you know, get a clog. And some zip ties. We also get an extra PTFE tubing and some spare parts here. Two nozzles, a coupler, and also looks like the probe for the BL Touch that's also installed on the printer. We also get a USB cable to connect from the printer to the computer. A socketed wrench for the nozzle replacement. And and also some tweezers, a glue stick if you're having trouble sticking to the bed, a tube of grease which is quite nice that they include this because we do have a lot of rails and also we can keep our lead screw lubed. And last but not least we do get a full spool of Creality PLA filament in white. So yeah it's nice that they include a whole spool. Alright so I'm gonna clean up here a bit and we'll install the spool holder and take a closer look at the printer. Alright so here we are kind of on the side looking towards the back here and this is where we're gonna install our spool holder. So yeah, we're just gonna screw one of the nuts here, the side that has two of them. And we're simply just gonna go from the back through the hole and put the nut on. And we can just tighten it with our hand by spinning the spool itself. 
And pretty much that's the only installation we need to do, except for these side panels that we'll put on a little later. All right, so let's take a closer look at this thing. It's actually quite large. You guys can see it sitting here on the table and it does take quite a bit of room, but I will admit it's a very good looking printer in the white with the doors tinted slightly bluish. So looking here on the top, we can see this new cover and this is gonna help us keep the heat in, which in the other version, you know, I was kind of confused a little why they didn't include something like this. And there's a note on here that says that when you are printing low temperature filament like PLA, you wanna take this off. And then with something like ABS, put this on to try to keep the heat inside. So the lid just sits down on the frame and it fits perfectly between these bolts here on the four corners, as you can see here. And there's a cutout in the back that feeds the wiring and the PTFE tubing through. And to pull it off, we just gotta raise it up and just take it up, simple as that. And it is really thick plastic of some sort, kind of like acrylic in a way that's in this frost finish. So on the top, this is what we see. Our hot end is up here, and this is a normal style printing setup, not Core XY. So that's our Y motor, and then our X motor, and then the Z motor is down under. So the Y motor is separate with the belt that's connected to the shaft here. And whenever it spins that shaft, we have two belts on each side that connect, and they all move together back and forth so and then our X is more simple with just a belt going around this way and everything is riding on rod rails so the ones on the X look like about eight millimeters the Y rails look like about 12 millimeters or so and the Z rails are about 14 or so so yeah much more beefier as it does have quite a bit to travel so our hot end is quite interesting it's actually made out of metal it definitely looks different and you probably guys can't see much but we do have a different kind of heat break in there and that is the high temperature kind we have an axial cooling fan here you guys can see our out of bed level sensor which is a BL touch so underneath we can maybe kind of see the heat break there and we do have a sock on the heat block our nozzle here a bracket that connects the belt and here we can see the fan duct and what's interesting is that it's actually 3d printed and a little rough to be honest and by the way we do have a LED light here that was hiding on the front that glows kind of down so looking from the bottom up you guys can kind of see how everything is structured so our end stop switch are Z here so the plate does move up to home, which is great. I really don't like when the build plate homes at the bottom because it takes forever to go back up. And our X axis and stop switch is over here. So that's gonna home like here. And then the Y is over here in this corner. So it's gonna go to the front and home right there. Yeah, I really like how they used a lot of metal pieces on all of the parts. Just everything feels very high quality. And also these large aluminum brackets here. And also all our stepper motors are different. So we got a 4234 on the X, 4248 on the Y, which is quite a bit larger, and a 4260 on the extruder, which is even bigger than that. But yeah, you guys can see the frame on the build plate here is pretty thick, like looks like two millimeters or three, just steel, like heavy duty steel. And this little bolt here, is actually an adjustment to the end stop switch. So yeah, very heavy duty construction all in this area. And we also get a pretty large aluminum piece here that holds the rods. There you can see our brass bushing and we do have large knobs to adjust the, the build plate, which by the way, it is heated. And also maybe you guys can see it is insulated. So yeah, very nice. And also we do have really high quality springs. So the build plate itself is a glass with the perforated coating on it. And there's still a protector on here. And maybe you guys can see the little dimples in the bed. And the way this works is that whenever it heats, it grips. And then when it cools off, it should prop off. So yeah, most of the time this works really good. So the plate itself does hold with metal clips here that pop off. And they are a little harder to take off than you would think. I just didn't want to break my fingernail. But yeah, they do come out and they kind of swivel over. And they actually are connected to the bottom portion. So yeah, they don't just fall out. So I think if you use them a couple times, they'll probably get easier just this first time. And that's all you have to do. And the two in the back don't do anything. You just kind of lift the front here and then you slide it out. Just like that. So and here you guys can see the aluminum heated bed. So let's go ahead and peel off the protector. And now we're going to simply just slide in the back. Kind of pushing on it there. Line it up and then click these in. And this thing is not going anywhere. So yeah, this is not great for, you know, pulling it in and out. And especially with this kind of coating, you wouldn't have to. Now, speaking of the coating, you can flip this around and use just a glass if you want to, you know, try that. All right, so yeah, that is the bill plate. So if we go down, we can see it's all nice and clean. Not much going on there. We got a QR code here with some cautions. And going to the front, we can see our pretty nice size, I think 4.3 inch touchscreen display. And I really like how they incorporated this. It kind of sticks out a bit. And just looks really nice and the door does go around it 
where it has a pretty interesting nice finish so yeah speaking of the door it's actually quite nice and large we do have a little magnets there that magnetize to the frame really high quality metal hinges Creality logo here on the top and looking at the right side of the printer here we don't have too much just venting and on the other side we do have our USB port which you can use to connect to your computer full size SD card slot and our voltage selection so this is quite important to check before you power on the printer so as you guys can see we're on 230 volts where I live I need the 115 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch it over I just grab the screwdriver and just like that and now we're on 115 so depending on where you live you want to switch it to the correct voltage and I really like these little holes here they look nice all right so I got the printer flipped around to the back so we can see a little better what it looks like we got bolts everywhere so here on this end we can see we have a bracket and it's actually 3d printed if you guys can see maybe or not but very interesting to see pretty rare these days so the wiring actually goes inside there's a channel in here that it travels down to the bottom the PTFE tubing just goes through here and down to the extruder and the extruder is all metal with the dual gear I really do like this extruder it's very nice and very consistent and also you can see we do have the clips for the couplers to keep the PTF tubing from moving so below that we have the filament detector and it's also all metal you guys can see there's an arrow there so our filament will go up through here and then into the extruder it's into through the boating tube out the hot end so going down from there we have the spool holder and the spool holder kind of sticks out a bit maybe you can see not too much but you know it does take up a little bit of room and that's another thing is that you know you will have to go to the back to change your spools and feed them through and things like that so it is ideal if this part of the printer or this edge is at the end of a table so you can get to it easily so as we go down we can see we have the manufacturing label and that tells us a little more about the printer so it is a CR5 Pro our power supply is 350 watts our build volume is 300 by 225 by 380 the machine size FDM type and it weighs 32 kilograms so this is where we're gonna plug in our power it is fused and this is our on and off switch that also looks like it illuminates so I went ahead and laid the printer down on one of the sides so we can see what's on the bottom and you guys can see these nice large rubber feet we got a really thick bottom plate for the cover which is quite impressive and here we have some venting I guess one for the power supply looks like and the other one here for the main board but I'm thinking guys that maybe I should go ahead and pull this cover off so we can see what's behind it all right so I got all the bolts out let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing off it is quite heavy and yeah guys this thing is really thick I'm pretty impressed of how beefy it is it's a very thick piece of metal all right so this is what we see and quite nice organization and just beautifully put together so let's go ahead and start on this side so we have the power input port and that goes into the power supply which is the thin kind and it is a mean well 350 watts 24 volts all the wires look like they're nicely connected and crimped so going this way we have our main board and this actually looks quite a bit different than the normal creality boards it's quite large and also the the main chip it's a AT mega 2560 so yeah quite interesting it is a 32-bit board but everything is integrated so we do have our stepper drivers right there and they are heat sinks but they are not removable so all the connections are glued so they don't pop out and actually guys I just noticed their version 2.5.1 so yeah overall everything looks really good and that's our SD card reader there and the USB connection so yeah all the wires come out from here and kind of go everywhere we do have have a blower fan here and it's the larger kind that blows down onto the board here we can kind of see the back of the display the touch screen and then some wires going here and that's our z-axis motor and this motor looks a little different than the rest of them you can see that heavy-duty aluminum bracket there and that's the bolts that hold it same thing for the top and going up from there we just got more wires going up and that's pretty much it guys so yeah very impressed with the build everything is nicely put together high quality materials so i'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on flip the printer around plug it in and we'll power it up all right so i got the cord plugged in let's go ahead and hit the power button all right it's powering on you can see the display and the bl touch also did something up there and it is glowing red so it does say cr5 pro h and there we go it booted up but the only issue is it looks like it's in chinese all right so maybe let's see settings and oh okay i see english right here there we go let's see if we go back and now it's all in english 
All right, cool. So we boot it up, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and click on control device. That's not where I wanted to go, but yeah, it looks like we have fan and LED. Okay, so we do have a light in there. Let's go ahead. Oh, look at that. It's very nice and actually quite bright. Not sure how the camera is gonna pick it up, but I guess we can leave it on. Hopefully we're not too overblown, but let's go back here. And we'll go through the menu here in a second, guys. What I'm trying to do is get to, let's see, settings move okay yeah and here we have the home button so you guys probably can't see this very well but yeah the middle here is the home button i'm gonna go ahead and click it all right so our hot end is starting to move so we got the x the y and it's going to the middle and it's going up for the z let's go ahead and open up this door here and you guys probably can't see that maybe as I am too low now. All right, so it looks like it did use the BL touch as part of the end stop switch for the Z. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at all of our menus here. So I'm just gonna go back to the beginning. So the screen is quite nice, good brightness, good angles, or pretty good even at a 45 degree. So we got a Creality logo up there. We got a Print, Control, and Settings button. And on the bottom here we have the hot end temperature and the bed temperature. So the Print button is gonna read our SD card, which there's nothing in there. Let's go back. Control is gonna give us, looks like preheat here. It might be still too bright. Yeah, it is bright. All right, hopefully you can see that. But yeah, it says PLA and ABS. So let's go ahead and hit PLA and let it preheat. And you guys can see these Parameters here are always here, which is really nice no matter what menu you're in because you can see your nozzle and bed temperatures. So those are automatic and then we have also a manual where you can manually set what you want it to be. So, so here we have a cooling which is a cool down. So if you click that it's just going to go back to zero or turn off the heating. And then device here which was our fan and our LED light. You can turn it on and off here. Let's go back. Here we have our settings button. We got leveling, filament change which they call it refuel, move. Here you can move the individual axes, the amount, and also this is where I homed it. We have a disable motor, so if you want to move your axes by hand or disable the motor lock, this is where you will do that. And this is our language button, English or Chinese, and printer information. And we can see it's a CR5 Pro H for high temperature, the build volume, and the company's information. So yeah, so let's go ahead and click on this leveling button. And so it's going to add a home right now. That's what it's doing. So after it home, you guys can see we have a few options here. So here we can adjust the offset by 0.1 millimeters up or down. And then we have an AUX leveling button and a measuring button. So so the AUX button is going to give us our manual adjustment to the bed and our measuring button is going to do the out of bed level. And if you guys see all these numbers, this is actually, let's see, one, two, three, four. So it's five by five grid, which is what, 25 points. So these are all the 25 points it took measurements of, I guess, at the factory when they preset it. But we wanna go ahead and obviously do this again. So the first thing we wanna do is adjust the bed manually as close as we can, or pretty close. So we're gonna click on AUX leveling and you guys can see we have five points that we can go to manually and so I'm just gonna be clicking them and the nozzle is gonna travel to the corresponding block so so you're gonna need some kind of piece of paper I'm just gonna use this sticky note here so the first thing I'm gonna do is click on one and that's gonna take us to this corner over here and so I'm gonna bring my paper in there and I'm gonna put it between the nozzle and the bed and it actually is not fitting so let's go ahead and tighten this up and there we go all right so you just want to you know slide drag and also guys, don't forget that you do wanna preheat the bill plate before you do this leveling. And I don't know if it automatically does that because we did have it preheated before we started. All right, so now I'm gonna click on two and it's gonna to go to this side and it's too tight. So what we're trying to do here is get, you know, pretty close. We don't have to be absolutely perfect. I would recommend making it as good as you can. So this one's actually a little loose, but they were all pretty close surprisingly. Well, let's see what this side looks like. Okay, this one's way too tight. Actually, no, not that tight. I only had to move it a little. So yeah, everything is pretty close already, but yeah, so just go around at least two or three times on all the corners, because when you change one, another one kind of changes. Like this one now is way too loose. So you want to go at least a few times around to make sure that they're all pretty level. All right, guys, so that was my third run, so I'm pretty close now. Yeah, each corner is pretty much where it needs to be, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the center and measure that. 
And at this point, if it's close, it's better just to leave it because we got the out of bed leveling. It's going to compensate anything, you know, if there's a dip or a hump there in the middle. So normally if we didn't have bed leveling, we would move the knob a certain amount the same on each one to move it up or down. But in this case, we're just going to let the out of bed leveling do all the work for us. So we're going to click on this measure here and it's going to start it. And you guys can see it's taking the measurements. And on the display, maybe you guys can see, but it's putting in the numbers in those blocks. So it's got five, now six done, and it continues to go. So it's actually pretty quick. It doesn't do a double take, it just does one take and it's done. All right, and that's our 25th point there. And it's done with the bed leveling. And just looking at them, we actually look pretty good overall. Only about 0.100 deviation from corner to corner. So yeah, looks good. So let's see if we can set our z-axis offset by clicking on home here. Then here we can adjust it up and down. All right, so it set itself up and yeah, it definitely needs to go up. It's too close. So let's go ahead and go up with it. And I've clicked it about four or five times now and it seems like we're getting a pretty good gap. Let me go one more time. Okay, that's too tight. So yeah, that should be good right there. So anywhere in between too tight and one up from there. So once you do that, we're pretty much ready to go. So we can go back here and we are done with leveling the bed. So let's go to control and click automatic and we'll click on PLA to preheat it. Make sure it's preheated. So let's go ahead and run our filament through. So this should be quite simple. We're gonna put our spool on the spool holder and you do wanna cut your filament on an angle so you can get through all the parts like the detector here pretty easily. So we're gonna go through the filament detector and then into the extruder. And then we're gonna just push on this knob and go through that and you guys can see it's coming out the PTFE tubing. Now you could just manually push it through. That's probably the fastest way or in the sand so you can go to refuel and feed it in manually but as you guys can see 10 millimeters is not even close to enough so if we click on it we can actually do something else and I think it's gonna be more like 650 to 700 probably millimeters so yeah and then we're gonna click on feed and it should start feeding it in but it's going so slow that it's definitely not even worth using it I mean it's ultra slow so you definitely want to manually push it through And you guys can see it's coming out the other end. So yeah, manually takes only a couple seconds and <laughs> it's super easy. All right, so for the next part, let's grab our SD card. And again, I love that it's a full size and we'll plug it here on the side and it does plug upside down, clicking in. Let's see if they have something for us to print. And it appears it's empty. So since it wasn't pulling up any files, I went to the computer and looked at what's on the card. And sure enough, there were some G code files in another folder that the printer can read. So I just extracted them to the main page to the front and now they show up. But let's go ahead and print one of these files that came with the printer. So we have a dog, cat, and a toosie. Not sure exactly what those are as it doesn't show, but I think I know what the dog is. So maybe we'll just start with that. So I'm gonna click on it and we'll click start. And there it goes. And this is what our menu looks like when it's printing and we'll get back to it here in a second. All right, so it looks like it's ready to go. And hopefully our Z offset is pretty good. All right, and so it's purging on the side. And it does look pretty much perfect, I think. It might be a little bit high. Maybe we can bring it down a bit, but it's actually not too bad. It looks pretty close, guys. So this is what we see while we're printing. We got the test file name on top, the status printing, the nozzle temperature and the target, the bed temperature of the target, the percentage finished, which is zero right now. And this is a bar that'll fill up. And it's been four minutes since we started. Over here in little letters, it says energy savings mode is off. And I'm not too sure exactly what that is. And down here we have stop, pause, and adjust. So let's click on adjust. Here you see we have a lot more options. We can go up and down on the z-axis. So I did click it twice to go down because it seemed like it was a little high when we first started printing. It's nice that we can adjust it up and down on the fly. So here we have the economic mode and it's off. Let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll see what happens when it's done. Our LEDs on off. They're on. The fan is off right now and I'm not exactly sure which fan this is because the one that's printing is on. So I'll leave it off whatever it is. Here we can adjust the print speed and if we click on it you can adjust it to what you want. So put it at 100 here. And here we can adjust our nozzle temperature and our bed temperature. So yeah, pretty basic, good controls and everything you need. 
So for next part, let's go ahead and listen to the printer and I'll put my microphone around it. And by the way, we only have this door right now and no side windows yet. So yeah, as you guys can hear, we do have quite a bit of fan sound, but no stepper sound at all. So we do have very quiet stepper drivers, which pretty much makes no sound that I can hear. Now, when it does change the direction, there's a little sound, but from moving, it doesn't seem to be making any sound at all. So it looks like everything's printing well. I'm gonna go ahead and print out this dog and we'll see what it turns out like. All right, so we printed out the three models that were included with the printer, and each one turned out okay. There's definitely a retraction problem because they all have stringy. Let's start with this little doggy here, and yeah, the bottom looks decent. The sides are okay. There's some blobs a little bit here and there. Definitely a lot of stringy, and the dog itself didn't turn out all that well, guys. Yeah, you guys can see the stringy on his tail there. A little bit of layer lines. Just looks a little rough, surprisingly. So not up to par to Creality standard is at least in my opinion but yeah let's see what this rabbit looks like so so this is the file that says Tuzi. I guess it's a little bunny here but this one turned out much better and I think the reason for that is because it's in this glow-in-the-dark filament which probably guys won't be able to see but it does glow in the dark but in any case this one turned out much better the body is much more smooth everything just looks a lot better and according to the layer lines I think these are at 0.2 layer height so yeah overall pretty good here now when we get to the ears this was where things get kind of rough especially in between here on the inside of the ear and also between the ears there's quite a bit of stringing here and because we didn't slice this, I think the retractions were just too low for this long Bowden tube. So I went ahead and printed the cat even though I didn't want to. And it's still stuck to the build plate. So let's see how easy it comes off. It is all cooled off. And there we go. So it pops off. Not as easy as I would expect it, but maybe we're still a little close to the bed. But I'm not sure looking at the bottom of here. So, And I think these are supports. Break that off. Yeah, that comes off pretty easy. And the support here. But... Lots of stringy. I would say that is the main problem is just stringy somewhat. And also the layers do sit pretty well, but not amazing. Almost seems like it's a little melty or something, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking for the next part, we should go to the computer and slice our own models. But instead of doing PLA, we'll go with PETG and then we'll do some ABS. All right guys, so here we are at the computer and I got the SD card plugged in. So let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what we see. So I dragged out the one, two, three G codes here out of the model folder, which you can see they're also here, all three of them. And also in this folder, we have other models that were included so you can print out and I might actually try some of these. They look kind of cool. We also get a little vase here. So yeah, lots of things to print out. Here we have the manual in PDF form. So you can look at it from the computer and these are all the specs of this printer. And we can see here on the nozzle temperature, we got up to 300 C. So yeah, it's basically a manual in PDF form. Here's a folder that says software and drivers, which also includes a PDF of the Creality Slicer manual. It basically guides you here of how to install it and then use it. Now for me, I prefer just to use Cura and that's what I'm gonna be using. So it's up to you if you wanna use the slicer. And also we have drivers so the computer can connect to the printer. And the third folder here, is we have troubleshooting PDF, which helps you with certain things that you might have trouble with. And just a good thing to go over to learn more about the printer. So there's also a bin file in here, and this might've been some kind of software update to the printer. And then we have a little video here, just showing up the uh, setup process. Yeah, guys, let's go ahead and open up Cura. And if you don't have this program, you can download it. It's free, ultimaker.com, or just search Cura, and it'll come up. So we're on the Creality Ender 3 Pro profile now. Let's go ahead and just add a printer. We'll just do it from scratch here. 
We're gonna click on not network printers over here and we're gonna find Creality. Click on that and then you're gonna see a drop down of all the printers that are available. And you guys can see they don't have the CR5 in here at all, which is <laughs> pretty interesting. But it doesn't really matter because the printer runs exactly like any of the older printers like the Ender 3 Pro. So we can use that profile or a CR10 or something. But let's just go with Ender 5 here because that is actually quite similar, I think. So we'll click Add. Then we're gonna change these dimensions to 300 by 225 by 380. So the rest should be fine. Extruder is 1.75, but one thing that's quite important to do, because we do have a BL touch or a CR touch, we need to go over here where it says G28 home and just add a G29 next to it. And that should do the trick. Now I think you can space them out also or even put it below it or above it, whatever, but it should work either way. And that's pretty much it. Then we're just gonna click next and here we can see our build volume. Actually, I forgot to rename the printer. So when you do add a printer, you can rename it right here in this box. So I named it Creality Sierra 5 Pro HT. But yeah, you can you know name it what you want and that's what it'll be. All right, so let's go ahead and throw something in here. We'll do the calibration cube and we'll push it back a little. So what I did is just click on it and you guys can see we got these minis on the side that you can move it around, scale it, and you can do it by percentages here by typing it in and also rotate it in any direction you want. So, so we're not gonna go into detail of how to use the slicer. We're just gonna click over here and put in the parameters since we are starting from scratch. So under profile, if you see these little dots here, if you click on that, you can click any of these things. If you just download it, you're probably going to start with basic but you want to click on advance and here you're going to have all these options which are you know more advanced but they're not actually that complicated so so here we have the layer height we're going to keep it at point two and everything else here is fine wall count i like to change to three you have better wall then top layers i like to change from four to five as it is better to have more layers on top for a better finish fill gaps i like to turn off because it takes more time and also i kind of like to see where the gaps are in the print infill is good at 20 percent, and everything else i'm not going to touch so since we are going to do PET G on these prints, we're probably going to bump this up to, let's say, 230. Let's just work with that. Initial layer, we'll just 235. So the build plate is at 50. We'll turn that to 60. Make sure we're sticking good. Print speed, I like to do 50 for everything, as I do use the speed for all of my testing. And everything else looks good. Now on the initial layer speed, I will turn that down to 15. I know it seems a little slow, but I do like that first layer slower as I can, you know, look at it and adjust it if I need to and stuff like that and then the skirt or brim we're going to turn to probably 25 go a little quicker there the rest looks good enable retractions so here we have five millimeters i think we need to bump this up because our tube is quite long we'll start with 6.5 and instead of 45 millimeters a second let's do 25 see how that works out and the reason we do a slower retraction speed is because we give it time to wipe itself on the way out but we can play around with this you know to try to fine tune the retractions so all this looks good here so we are going to enable cooling, but we're going to turn it down for PETG to 50%. And when we print ABS, we'll probably just turn it off completely because we want ABS to be as hot as possible when we're printing it. But again, you can play around with the setting and adjust it accordingly and see how the prints come out. So here we can generate supports, which we're not gonna do on this model. And then our build plate adhesion type is skirt. So that means the model will be straight to the build plate with a few layers around it. Three at this point here, which is a skirt. And you can choose the type you want, either brim, raft, or none at all. And it'll just go straight to printing. So I like skirt the best because it kind of purges the nozzle around the print and then starts printing it. Now, if you have a hard time sticking to the build plate, you might want to use brim, which is basically the same thing. It goes around, but it touches the model at the edge. So you got a lot more surface area that it can grab to. And the last thing here is we have spiralized mode. If we click that, we're going to print a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around. So we'll probably print something out like a vase or something in this. So. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So we're ready to slice this cube and it's going to take 37 minutes. So so we can save it straight to the removable or to your computer. So I'm gonna go straight to the SD card and I'm not gonna inject it yet. We'll double click here or right click and clear the build plate and we'll throw the Benchy in here. I'm gonna move it back just a little bit and we'll go ahead and slice the Benchy also in the same way as the cube. And that's gonna take almost two hours, which is not too bad for a Benchy. And we'll save that to the SD card again. And if we open it up, we can see we have our new files right here.
the Benchy and the calibration cube. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. So whenever we print ABS, we'll just bump up the printing temperature to like 250 or something, maybe even 260. Maybe we'll try something even hotter since this printer can do it. Maybe we'll go up to 280. Maybe for fun, I'll try 300 just to see what happens. And for the bed, we can, you know, go to 100 to get it really hot in there. And we will need to do that for ABS. All right, well, hopefully this little overview was helpful. I'm gonna eject the card and we'll start printing our PET G models. All right, so these are the PET G prints that we printed, and there were three of them. Calibration cube, a benchy, and also we did spiralized mode for this spaceship plane. So let's start with the cube. So here we have the X, and you guys can see it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of ringing and a slight ghosting, but not too bad. So here's our Y, a little bit more ringing, but almost no ghosting. Our X wall and our Y wall. So you can see that the Y has a little bit more artifacts in it. The bottom looks pretty good and the top looks great. Yeah, very nice on the calibration cube. So here we have the Benchy and this is probably a little more interesting. So bottom looks good. By the way, I did use some glue because the first Benchy I started it <laughs> popped off. I might have not been close enough to the bed so I did lower it by 0.1. So I also did use a tad of this glue stick, just a little bit, a little white to make sure it's stuck and it had no issue whatsoever. So yeah. So because this is PET G and we did print it at what 230 it appears that maybe we were a little hot but overall it looks pretty good a little bit of layering here and there but it's very minor the box on the back looks pretty good so we did have a little bit of stringing the walls look decent the back wall there this side so overall not too bad and the top so I think the retraction probably needs to be bumped up to maybe seven, seven and a half. As we do have a pretty long tube, that might need a little more than usual. And also guys, because of the reflections and the lighting, it does make it look a little worse than it actually is. In reality, the print itself actually looks pretty nice. So the spaceship here is still stuck to the build plate. I haven't tried to get it off and it's stuck on there pretty well. And we are the full 380 millimeters high. And you guys can see the bed actually went all the way down and literally stopped like a millimeter meter maybe two at the most before it hit the bottom so it was very close to the end and that is the maximum height so without trying to just pry this thing you know maybe breaking it because it is one layer this is spiralized mode I do have a little trick that kind of works you just grab a piece of paper and put it right next let's see where you want to pry it and then grab the little snippers and then we're just gonna use the snippers here to pry underneath and then kind of like this and you guys saw how easy that popped off and this way you don't scratch into the build plate and this usually works really well and there it goes so this one broke loose and once you raise it you know you could put like a spatula in there to help get deeper but it's pretty much broken loose as you can see so it probably will go pretty easily now but i'm gonna take extra caution do the same thing here and there we go so yeah, when I have trouble, this works very well. And I did use a tiny bit of glue. I just kind of did this, like make a wave, just so some of it catches it. Because I didn't want to print this pretty large print and then have it break off at the end or somewhere in the middle, so. And don't be afraid to use glue, guys. I mean, it's not a big deal. You just put a very thin layer and it kind of guarantees your print will stick. And not only that, you put a little layer between the plate and the model, which is the glue, that actually adds more life to the build plate. And it's very easy to wash. As if you start having too much glue, you just use soap and water and wash it really good. And that actually helps the plate renew itself also and stick better after you wash it. All right, so let's take a closer look at this spaceship. I don't even know what this thing is called. I think it's an air plane slash spaceship but it's a really cool print I really like it so this is our bottom looks pretty nice everything stuck well the layers did go down beautifully now you can see kind of like lines and that's just filament discoloration or I don't even know what to call it or at least some of it is I mean there is a bit of layering but if I just move my finger over it it's very consistent overall 
and you can kind of see the lines here and there and because it's so shiny it kind of sticks out you know but yeah overall guys this print is pretty nice and this is one layer in pet g and if i push on it you can see it flexes and the reason i wanted to print it in higher temperature is because i did want it to stick good so i can bend it without it breaking so it's not so fragile and i'm actually pretty impressed with the pet g how flexible it is so and going up guys we can see that even the top there actually turned out pretty good so we do have a pretty good sharp corner it did melt a little bit and our fan is only at 50 percent so yeah i guess that's kind of expected yeah overall i'm pretty happy with this print mostly i'm happy how sturdy it is oh wow look at that it just put a crease in it so yeah pretty impressive i don't think pla would do this good so it must be just the uh, filament in any case so yeah this is petg that we printed which is all nice and dandy but you know a printer like this obviously needs something more serious like abs to print so i think for the next part what i'm going to do is i'm going to slice three calibration cubes and we're going to print them all in different temperatures the first one will be at 250 and then 275 and the third one will be at 300 and we'll see the differences and how they look and I'm gonna go ahead and install the side windows and also we'll put the cover on top but before we start printing I wanted to caution you about these rods because you have a continuous motion here back and forth like this combined with a lot of heat you tend to thin out the grease on these rods and they become dry after a while like literally dry when you touch them you almost can't feel anything on them like right now they have just a little bit but they already start starting to dry up so after a certain amount of printing especially in high temperature like we're about to do you know we're gonna really build a lot of heat so we're gonna really thin out the lubrication on them and if you don't maintenance them by keeping them lubricated which is why this grease tube was included and you just want to put a tiny bit just enough to you know put a layer on there and you barely want anything and then you can just spread it like this so if you spread it all around the rod is the best way to do it so wherever the most motion is which is right here in the middle is where you'd want to do it and then we can move it to this side and kind of do the other side so yeah you kind of want to do this once in a while because if you don't these rods will wear out and you'll see like scuffing in them and they'll become harsh so yeah now that i lubricated it's even more smooth now i mean it's like buttery smooth so yeah, just keep in mind you do have to keep them lubricated and also the Y on the two sides also need a little bit of lubrication here and there. So let's move our hot end to the home position and it'll be easier to put this cover on. So the cutout here in the back will literally line up with the wiring and the tube and the lid will literally sit between these bolts. And wiring will rub on the top but that should not be a big deal at all. So let's go ahead and start preheating everything and we'll click on ABS and it's going to go to 240 and 100 on the bed. Now the specs do show that the bed can go up to 110 but I'm just going to go to 100. And while we're waiting we can go ahead and put these windows in so we do need to peel the protector off. Unfortunately they are frosted so yeah I don't really like that because you know I would have liked the window I can see through. A frosted window is almost like just a wall so yeah I wish they would have went with the clear windows. Yeah it's just going to slide in. Pop into the little holes and then we're gonna put the little bolts in it to hold it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and install them and we're already at 82C. So yeah, pretty quick. It's only been about three minutes or so, maybe four. And the nozzle is already at 240. All right guys, so I got everything ready. The sides are on, the cap is on, I fed through the ABS filament and you guys can see we're at 100 and it took maybe five minutes, maybe a little more, not that long actually, which is great for those kind of temperatures. And I think the insulation has something to do with that. So let's go ahead and purge a little bit. There we go. So it's actually getting pretty warm inside, pretty toasty. Okay, that should be good. Let's go back and I sliced the models, which are kind of scattered around, but yeah. We'll start with this one, which should be 150, or I'm sorry, 250. Okay, so it's gonna start with 255 and then be 250. And 100, as you guys can see on the bed, so. And this bed is gonna start moving up here shortly. So because the heated bed is going to be up high, most of our heat is going to be up here. But yeah, this is a pretty nice cap and it should keep most of our temperature in. Uh, grab that burger real quick before it starts printing. There might be a little more glare because of this door here reflecting. Actually, it looks like we need to go a little higher, guys. Alright, so, so far so good. And the uh, offset looks just right. I was worried a little bit about it being maybe closer because it's hotter, but it looks perfect actually. And we are printing ABS at 250 C. Of course, the cube is pretty small, so you know this is not something that's too hard to print. 
but yeah we're gonna go ahead and print three of them this one at 250 and then 275 and also at 300 and i'm really curious to see how they're gonna turn out All right guys, so we are printed our first cube. You can see it there in the background. And we started our second one at 275. And one of the things that I forgot to tell you guys about this energy saving mode, in the adjust settings, it's called economic. If you turn that on, after a few layers, it turns off the heated bed and goes to zero, which is not a good thing at all, because with the type of bed that we have, the print will easily pop off. So you definitely don't wanna use this mode for this type of bed, unless maybe you're using glue and you know the print won't fall off, you could, you know, turn it off. But yeah, it just turns off the heated bed after a certain amount of layers. So we're printing our third cube, which is at 300C. I'm noticing that it might be a little too hot for ABS at that temperature because it's looking a little gooey. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on the parts cooling fan, which is this here. And you guys can see we're at 300, which is kind of crazy and 100 on the bed. And I really think that's going to help us, especially with the lettering there or those turns and overhangs. Because on the second cube we printed at 275, it had trouble already. And and also guys the bed being at 100 the print is having no issue sticking and this one here is not even trying to warp everything seems to be going pretty good all right so we got the three cubes printed and i'm pretty impressed how well the 300c actually turned out considering you know it was way too hot for abs turning that fan on really saved the cube because if we didn't i think it would have been pretty rough looking as we'll see this one started having trouble because of the heat so the bed is still at 65 degrees and it's a little hot but i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can pull this off all right, so I'm gonna try to hold them all three together at the same time so we can see. So this is 250, 275, and 300. So yeah, overall, they all look pretty good. Pretty impressive on this 300, and you guys can see there it started having trouble with the 275, and actually we had a little lift here too, so you can see it's kind of warped. And the 250 also has some melting, especially there on the top. Not too bad for the X here on all three. So here we have the Y. The 250 looks really good. 275 is all right, but you can see how melty it is, especially on the edges there. And then the 300 actually looks really good. So yeah, that fan really saved it. So here we have the X wall, 50, 75, and 300. Overall, they all look pretty good. The Y wall looking good here on the normal temperature, 75 and 300. And we can see the 300 was starting to have some trouble. The tops look pretty good. 300 was starting to kind of really melt. 75 still look decent. And our bottoms, 50, 75, and 300. Lowered the 300 down a little bit more because I was worried that it might not stick. So that's why it looks a little more flat. But then again, maybe these were too high, so. Pretty impressed with how these printed out and you guys see that the printer is very capable of printing high temperature. So everything up here does get hot, like even the frame, like it's still pretty warm right now just touching it. But you do create a lot of heat and it does get trapped really good. And what's great is that when you first start printing, you have the least air to heat, which is great when you're starting a print. And then as you go down, you don't need that heat as much. And so you have more volume, you know, to keep everything warm. So as far as high temperature goes, this is a good design. So unfortunately, I only have ABS to try out. I wish I had something more extreme that it would actually work for 300C. But you guys saw how easily it was able to melt the ABS and actually overheat it to the point where it was just droopy. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and print something larger in ABS, maybe we'll choose another color. And we'll see how well this bed sticks and how the print turns out. All right, so we printed another ABS model and it was a little bit larger. And you guys probably can see that I think I had a little too much confidence in the bed and we still end up warping the edges there or pulling up. So yeah, as you can see with ABS, it is tricky, but I did not have any glue practically at all on the bed. 
So it was all just a perforated. And surprisingly, it, you know, didn't completely pull off and just failed. It still printed and I haven't broke it loose. The bed is cooled off pretty much. So let's go ahead and see how easy. So it is stuck on there pretty good. So just the edge is pulled up. So we might have had some glue here and this is why we see some white underneath from earlier prints and most likely if I would have applied glue everywhere it would have stuck just fine so yeah unfortunately we did warp not terrible for this part it's obviously still usable because this is an electrical box for like an outlet and you feed in your wires here through the side and it is an ABS so it's quite strong and durable and it'll last probably forever so so the bottom looks pretty good except for warping up the layers are pretty consistent there is a little bit of layering here and there, but not bad, especially considering we are printing ABS. So overall, I'd say it's actually pretty good and quite nice looking. And definitely something usable that you could obviously use to connect an outlet. So, you know, this is quite a functional part that we printed here. So overall, I do think this printer has special abilities as it can heat the bed up to 110 degrees and then the nozzle all the way to 300. And that in itself gives this printer the ability to print filaments that you normally wouldn't be able to. And not to mention how well this whole thing is built. We have very nice high-end materials everywhere. It has this very heavy-duty steel frame and it's very attractive in this white color and just looks stunning as far as printers go. But with that said, I feel like, you know, this is a pretty specialized printer because you wouldn't be buying this just to print people. LA, you would definitely be venturing into more exotic materials. So we do get a very decent build volume of 300 by 225 by 380 tall. Everything runs on rod rails, which is very nice and precise, but you do need to lubricate them. We do have the BL touch install, which makes out of bed leveling simple. It does have a pretty unique motherboard with stylent stepper drivers, nice large touch screen with an easy to use UI. And in the back, we do have that dual gear extruder and also the filament detector. And also we have safety and convenience like overheating protection and resume printing after power loss. So yeah, overall, I think this printer is great, especially for someone that's looking for all the features that it has. And I do want to say thank you to Top 3D Shop for providing it for this review. So if you are interested in it, I'm going to have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you guys did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. And if you do enjoy videos like this, stay tuned. I got more 3D printing stuff coming up. And also check out my 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. And if you did make it to the end, thumbs up to you. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.